uh, sort of opens up its borders, increases its immigration policies. You'll see, you'll see change slowly but surely. Yeah, I mean it's inevitable. But. Yeah, I think when people stop putting people in boxes and like this whole thing with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Annoying. Yeah. Then you could just open up, like, like even back in like history, like mm -hmm. putting everybody on boxes and taking them away because we're not the same skin color. Like, yeah, I just uh -huh. it's just it's just yeah, I don't know. like it's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, we go through all these wars and slavery and like separation because people can't understand it. We all human. We all the same people. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. it's really it's really crazy. But see, here's a question. Okay, so here's a question for I have you all. Know. So, let's say that, mm -hmm. and please feel free to be perfectly honest. Like, I want y'all to be honest so that we can talk about this. If I were a gay white male, would you, you in this it? environment, no, I'm just saying, like, if I was, if I was a gay white male, would you, in your day-to-day -day interactions with me, take me as seriously as you do now? Yeah. I mean, we gotta. Th Not yet. I mean, yes. I mean, it's Wait, worth. What do you mean by serious? Like take you serious, but yeah. Like when you when I say take you serious, like would you, would you honestly, would you continue to, to treat me the same that you treat me now? Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Uh, I, I have a lot. Of, I, no, 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 no. I, that's no. That's good that we talk about it because I, I was expecting. Honestly, I was expecting some people to say, "I'm not sure," which would go back again to because why. at the end of the day, you're still human. Yeah, exactly. Either and you're that's, gay or white or black, you're still a human being. So mm -hmm. why would I treat you differently? Yeah. I have yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's so. It's evolving so much. Like now that it wouldn't be like a big deal to us, but if we were the same people like maybe like this age, age, like 15 years, years ago. Yeah, like, even 15, yeah. It, it would be like, <clears throat> we'd be like a little iffy, like, I I don't know. But like, I think because our generation, we had so much of it and mm -hmm. we see so much of it, we like learn to treat people the same, yeah. that it's better for us. You know? Like yeah, to feel comfortable having someone older than us to be that way. Yeah. And still respect them. Yeah, and, and, and see, see no, that's, that's a, no, and that's a good point. Like, the sit, like, w would you talk about this with your older family members? Like, if I told my grandma, I, I have a cousin, and I said, Grandma, you know, so and so bitch. What? I she? That's a sin. Oh my god. Like, uh huh. She. Oh. <laughs> I, got it. I mean, it's our generation now. Like, it's different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We might not think it's weird, but you know, they might think it is because mm -hmm. they have they haven't seen it a lot. So. And see, the funny thing is, so I have a grandma just like yours, where a similar, actually exact same situation happened. Throw a verse at you. Uh huh. Everything, like everything she talked about. Oh, the Lord said, I'm like, all right, grandma. Ask you a simple question. Which is funny because you think about, you know, which is funny because you think about. So when I was doing my research for this, when you scrap through the Bible, now this is, this is not the Jewish interpretation of the Bible. This is the predominant Protestant. Um, uh, Roman Catholic, all these different types of verses. When you read through either King James, King James version, International version, like you name it, the original text, you don't you don't see anything talking about it. You don't see. I mean, there's no like I said. The, now the Judaic proverb, which is probably what most people use to substantiate their evidence from a religious background. I mean, that it is your grandma Jewish. I know mine isn't, and she uses, like I said, she uses the same line, um, which is, it's important, you, you really have to, you have to know yourself. It, I have a question. Uh-huh. Is that a Jewish Bible, or like? So, Ju so Judaism has a few differences from, I don't want to say the main line of Christianity, mm -hmm. but I mean, I mean, honestly, but like, the, sort of, the more popular. Mm -hmm. That's that's I think that's a fair term. The more popular, more more read uh, version of, of of the text of Christianity um, has some differences that have caused wars uh, historically. But there there are differences. Sort of one of the, one of the differences is the interpretation of who Jesus was. Um, I know in Judaism, uh, Jesus is portrayed as a prophet. 
in mainline Christianity, he is part of the Trinity. He is the end all be all. He is, he is one of the part. He is the he is the Messiah. He mm -hmm. is he is God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus all in one. He's the Trinity, mm -hmm. um, which has caused you know wars and, mm -hmm. and conflict historically. I mean, imagine from someone going to being you know a king to just being a a, a prophet, and a prophet was already. A, a high position as it is. Think of a pro uh, prophet sort of as, I don't know, like a pastor or something like that in, in old times. But, you know, just how that simple difference in identity can cause lives. I mean... We had, like, an athletic person, I don't know what you call it, mm -hmm. in South Africa. Her name was Costa. Mm -hmm. And she was, like, winning everything. She was, like, really popular, like, Olympics and stuff like that. The, I don't know what distance she was running. But she was winning like all these medals and stuff, like by a long, long mm -hmm. distance in the females' races. And so they tested her because it was so crazy that she was winning by so much. I remember that story, yeah. Um, so it turns out she had like male. Yeah, I remember stuff, that, yeah. A lot of testosterone and stuff. And like her popularity in the country kind of like died down. As soon mm -hmm. as like they found out she was like, gay and like mm -hmm. female male whatever like she is mm -hmm. like nobody so how really is she, spoke gay? To so she got no she is gay like she married like a female like she no, identifies as a female. how did she runs in women's races how did the men's like was it just she was born with those she was born with or yes yeah. mm -hmm. oh. oh i thought you were saying like she was born a man changed to a woman no she's oh. a woman with but male like organs male inside, which mm -hmm. makes her like run really, she has like a lot of testosterone and stuff. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so what she's saying is, the, there are, there's, there are very rare traits, like I said, that I said earlier, where some people are born with two X chromosomes on top of a Y chromosome. Mm -hmm. So, she has additional, I guess, gifts. Um, so, females can't have gifts? Uh, <laughs> And, and that, cut, and that, like I said, that when when you start talking about classification, especially in sports and these things that we highly regard, um, I mean, what what is a woman? What is a man? And what what do you do for those exceptional people, albeit rare, that are in between? I mean, do we completely just void? Do we void? And and this has been a a question throughout history. Do we void? people of color because they don't look like us? Do we I void color, gay or bisexual people no, because they don't, they don't align with our identity? Like it's, that's, the, that's the common historical question that we've always come back to. Do we but ignore? Like we always, well, history itself always ignores, like I said, and put boxes and mm -hmm. I just have to I think yeah. even um, unconsciously we yeah, have all good like prejudices mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. even realizing mm -hmm. that or like it's like innocent. You know? Yeah. So. But see, the thing is, what what social constructs help develop those prejudices? Because it it becomes a thing when it, it becomes works. a subconscious. When it becomes a subconscious element to you. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's people not knowing who they are at first. Yep. Exactly. So yeah. Keep saying what? What? No, I can hear you whispering. You gotta know where you come from in order to accept somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why I feel like not, like I said, not even just in the context of us being RA staff, in the context of us moving forward in life, we have to be able to recognize that even though people have different identities as us. They're still human. We can still talk to them, interact with them, mm -hmm. play with them, and love them all the same. Mm -hmm. And I think so. It's like if um, like those people, like Caucasian people, mm -hmm. um, if they don't have those conversations with their kids, then it's like if they've never seen their mom or their dad hang around with black people, and they feel like, well, my parents have never done it, so why should I? Like, mm -hmm. they kind of just fall into it. Just because their parents did, without even having that conversation with their parent, mm -hmm. their parent might have nothing against black people, but having that that thing over their head where like white people are superior to everyone else, then they must mm -hmm. they might just feel like it, it that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like without even, I think just if Caucasian people were to have a conversation with their children more often about being open to everyone, then things would be a little different. Yeah. Which, do you think that that puts more pressure? On up because for the most part, everybody in this here, in this room here, is a person of color. Do you think that that puts more 
pressure on you every time that you have an experience with a Caucasian person to maybe act your best? Or do you feel that you can still operate within your understood identity? Do you feel like you should really have to conform to other people to be the best person that you are all the time when you're around a And this is a, this is a common workplace thing, work, workplace, workplace culture, where you, know, you might not be able to wear your long cultured hair down or wear whatever cultural attire, your hijab or everything. Yeah, whatever, yeah, like anything and everything that it is. Like should that, should that come to the workplace, your place where you make your livelihood? Should that come even into your daily life? It does come. It so does. Certain come, places yeah. that you can't have colored hair, you can't do mm -hmm. certain things that you would want to do because you have to look a certain way. Yeah. And does that really impede on the human aspect of it? For the most part, the answer is almost always no. Exactly. Chick Fil A. They don't accept people. Mm -hmm. But people still eat there. I still eat there. <laughs> <laughs> I still eat there too. So I eat there too. Good. I think. Oh, it's time. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you for liking it. Thank you. Thank you for liking it. <laughs>